on the road on our Walmart to Walmart tours, we don't get much entertainment. But when we do, we're watching Trucker Josh. You should too. Flatbed Trucking, Sam Rides. Tell them all about it, Sam. Tell them, they're on your road. Tell them, tell them, Sam. Tell them how it is. <laughs> a.m. on Thursday. We've got to be in Winnipeg in two hours for a delivery appointment. Right now, then we head up to Arbor. We'll get hooked up. We've got to pick up a, a roll tight trailer that's uh, supposed to be waiting in the yard for me. Hopefully, everything is there and ready. And uh, paperwork is supposed to be in my mail slot. all goes according to plan the plan will be executed flawlessly that's the plan to execute the plan I'm not too sure what I even have to deliver I know it's chained down and the chains on the load belong to one of our owner operators and I got to make sure to remember to return it to the yard and tag it for him and make sure that those get back to him so it must be some kind of machinery or parts or something I think this is the trailer I'm supposed to take. There was a driver that left uh, the paperwork in my slot like he was supposed to, so I got the paperwork. But he didn't write the trailer number on the paperwork. Luckily, dispatch yesterday told me which trailer it's on, so I'm hoping that they're right. We're just gonna double check. There's supposed to be one piece in here, chained down, uh, parts for a crane. I got that one piece delivered here, and I was told this is a very tight corner, so to take it wide. Here we go. We're in the St. Boniface Industrial Zone in Winnipeg. So not only is it, uh, oh, I don't want all that dust in my truck. No, you stay out there. You stay out there. So not only is it a tight corner, it's also a busy corner, apparently. Oh, that pickup truck just cut off that truck. Oh, he's giving her now. He's giving her now. Had to be first. Good job, buddy. You're first. Oh, now you gotta stop for that guy. Ha! <laughs> ha! Justice. Okay. I'm going, I'm going. Here we go, here we go. Sending it. Take her wide, trucker Josh. Take her wide. No trains coming. Nice. Okay. Oh, 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 Winnipeg roads. Oh, yikes. So I gotta turn left up here, and then I'm gonna go left up Lajemodie to the perimeter. What's this? Does that say gas is dollar nineteen nine? No, dollar seventy nine nine. Never mind. Never mind. Don't get your hopes up, Trucker Josh. The world is still messed up. Dollar nineteen nine is still expensive, by the way. By the way, it's always going to be expensive until it goes back down below a dollar. Where it should be, where it belongs. Dollar eighty per liter for gasoline. What are we, Europe? We don't pay those prices here. Oh, red lights, they always slow me down. I got another one right there. There's not even anybody here. Oh, there comes a van. You better give her, bud. Better give her, you're gonna lose your light. Give her, give her, but don't speed. Don't speed. Oh, you didn't make it. Oh, you're going for it anyways. Going for it anyways, I'll forgive you. I won't tell anybody. I won't tell anybody. We gotta go through here. And then turn left. Looks like everybody there is turning left, so I'll be able to also turn left. Everybody's got their signals on, so I'm gonna go this way, you're gonna go that way. Everybody's happy. What's this guy doing? 
He's got his left turn signal on. Are you like, what are you doing? Oh, hey bud, you didn't need the whole road for that. You could have made it from this lane, but eh, I guess better safe than sorry. It is a tight driveway and he didn't take a very good angle. But that's okay, here I am just judging him. Oh man, that is a tight spot to get into. I think I would have taken it from this lane, but I uh, may as well take the whole road if you need it, whatever. Oh look, gas is free at Domo. Free plus five cents off. So they pay you five cents per liter? Nice. Get paid to fill up a Domo. Tell your friends. I need to turn left from this lane. It's also a left turning lane. Wonderful, wonderful. The brakes work just nicely like they're supposed to. I love it. I really got to clean my windshield, don't I? Yikes. What is wrong with me? I even bought a special little tool so I could like do it like sitting here, like when I'm parked, obviously, and it like reaches out to all the window. It makes it really easy. But I left it in the shop. Of course I did. Why would I take things I need with me? That'd be way too convenient. Are we going to make the light? Are we going to make the light? Come on, guys, give her. I don't want to wait. Stay green. Stay. Stay. Yes. Nice. Wonderful. Look at that. So this is Lajemodje. It goes all the way through the city on the east side of the river. Uh, this actually turns into Highway 59 and goes right past work. Uh, if you follow this highway all the way south, it'll take you down to the U.S., uh, into Lancaster, Minnesota, crossing from Tolstoy, Manitoba. And uh, if you follow it all the way north, it takes you up to Cottage Country. Why was that guy in my lane? He doesn't have a signal on, so it's not like he was trying to get in here. Some people don't know where their vehicle is in relation to the lane. Uh, sometimes you can always tell because people who like have a driver's seat here on the left They'll put themselves in the center of the lane instead of their car So you can always tell because they're always offset to the right Oops, 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 and oops. Oh, ho, you didn't hear nothing. I won't tell if you don't Can't find them grind them Man, you always see those people who are offset and then they're always hitting curbs and stuff on the side because they put their steering wheel in the center of the lane instead of off to the left. It's, it's kind of funny. But you gotta be careful because when they're in that lane, they wander into your lane all the time. Come on in, bud, I see your signal. Lots of room, lots of room, give her. Come on in, come on in, make your decision. There you go. Or you made your decision, make your move. when they're gonna do the road cleanup, like the spring cleanup. It's so dusty out here because we still got all the sand on the road from winter. Maybe they're waiting to see if we're gonna have fifth winter. You never know. I'm gonna be really early for my appointment. My appointment is noon. It's 10.30 right now and I'm just getting into Arburg. So I guess that's good. It's better to be really early than really late. It's better to be really early than one minute late. <clears throat> Apparently there's some flooding around here. Looks like uh, Highway 7 was closed. I took Highway 8 up, which is probably good. Oh, well, oh, buddy, 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 I'm, I'm coming. Thank you for not looking. Oh, he did look, just at the last second. Look at all this water here, eh? There's supposed to be a river down there under that bridge. Wow. I don't think the water's gonna be going up any further. I think it started to go down already, but yeah, it's uh, it's definitely flooding in areas of the province. Man, 
Manitoba is the low-lying grounds of the prairies. We have water that comes all the way from the eastern Rockies. It flows all the way out here into the Red River and up into Lake Winnipeg and then up into the, the Hudson's Bay, up north into the ocean. So we're the lowest lying land. I believe Winnipeg is about 900 feet above sea level. Whereas when you go to Calgary out west on the other side of the prairies, there you're sitting at probably what, 1900 feet? 15 to 1900 feet above sea level. So it's not that much higher, but it's enough that all the water runs all the way this way. And then all the water from down south comes here as well, like down in North Dakota, South Dakota. All that water flows towards the Hudson's Bay, comes right through Manitoba. So every spring we gotta kind of keep an eye on our water levels. Some areas of the province are lower than others. Where I live in Steinbeck, it's pretty good. There's no, uh, no real flood risk. It just gets really wet and then once the ground thaws after winter, it just soaks into the ground, goes into the aquifers. But this is good, right? I mean, for the last couple of years, we haven't had enough rain. And the farmers have had bumper crops because they haven't had enough water. It's been very, very dry. This year, I guess, made up for it. Like, look at this field here. I don't know how the farmers are gonna get onto the field to sow their crops and to seed. But you can't get a tractor in there. You'll just get stuck. You'll sink right into the mud. It's gonna take weeks yet before that field is dry enough for them to get their uh, seeding equipment on there. I hope that doesn't cause problems. I mean, the world's got enough problems with food shortages right now. You don't need the breadbasket of Canada to go underwater. <laughs> all that water over there too. Man. It's official. T-shirt weather. At last! It's been long enough. Whew, I was wearing my sweater for most of the morning. It took all day to load here. I got here about 10.30 and it's now 4.30. So uh, it, was a, it was a bit of a detailed extensive complicated load and uh, we got it done so i'm proud of that uh, i'm gonna get it back to the yard in one piece without anything falling off and uh i'm gonna go home 4 30 5 30 6 30. i'll probably be home at about 7 7 o'clock 7 30 tonight but hey at least we got the load uh in the trailer the load is going to hallbrook new york in the usa if you didn't know where New York was. But before I go, I gotta show you something. Because I was here all day, I didn't waste my time. Shined up the truck a little bit more. Because that's what you do when you're bored and you have nothing to do and you're waiting. You bring all your cleaning stuff along and you shine up the truck. How's that look, eh? I got the stacks scrubbed up the best I could. I'm gonna have to get some chrome polish, some chrome cleaner or whatever. But the best I could. I'll get all that soot off of there. And just gave uh, a nice wipe down of everything here. So it's slowly getting shinier. Slowly. One piece at a time. Eventually it'll shine. Oh, okay. Let's get going. Day's done. What's a good uh, YouTube friendly way to describe this day? A long butt day. It's nice to be able to come uh, to the shop at the end of the day and have everything organized. This weekend I'm hoping to get the time to uh, pull all of these products out of the boxes and actually line them up on the shelves here. It'll take up less space and I think it'll look pretty neat. Nice and organized. Better than just boxes on shelves, right? That's all my bull snot. I have a little bit of bull snot. 
And one piece at a time, we're going to make this truck shine. You just watch. I got a bunch of microfibers. That's my, my haul. I try to pick up a new one of those every payday. It's a new pack. So I got lots of clean ones. Those are my dirty ones down there. I need to get a hamper for them yet. Uh, I want to wait until I have a, a laundry load full and then I'll wash them all together. But these down here don't have any grease on them. But they do have a lot of that black stuff from polishing. And I'm hoping that that's not going to stain our washing machine. If you guys know how to clean these, if I shouldn't put them in the washing machine with that oxidation or whatever, that black stuff from polishing on them, uh, can you let me know how to clean them? I don't want to just throw them out. That's a waste. I'm going to wash them. It'll be fine, right? It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Right? Because if I wreck the washing machine, my wife is going to kill me. Like, not like the other day, like when I spent $800 in air purifiers kind of kill me. This is a, I wrecked the washing machine kind of kill me. That's a whole different level. Well, I'd be, uh, I'd be a fugitive on the run. You guys, I'd just disappear. You guys would never hear from me again. Like, uh, it'd be awful. I mean, well, most awful for me, because I gotta, I, I gotta be disappeared. Can't do that. So we cannot wreck the washing machine. It should be all right though, right? As long as I don't wash it with other stuff. Anybody know? Please let me know in the comments. This is the, the black stuff I'm talking about. This is that stuff that uh, you know, comes off the aluminum when you're polishing it. It's really dirty, right? And on some of these rags, it's uh, like right black. Like just black, black. And it'll never fully come out, but I do want to wash them because I want to use them again. I don't want to just throw them out. My wife is watching this right now, and she's already on her way over to the washing machine to ensure that I haven't already wrecked it. So, God help me. <laughs> I'm sure it'll be fine. I'm sure it'll be fine. Could always go to a laundromat, I guess probably be the safest bet. But then I have the question, where's the nearest laundromat? I don't think we have a laundromat in Steinbeck. So I have to take my whole load of laundry and go do it in Winnipeg? It'd be worth it if I get to live after. I mean, there's that. I mean, it'd be worth it. In that case, it'd be worth it just to throw them out and buy new ones. If we're talking about my life. But I'll probably I'll find a laundromat maybe. We'll see, unless you guys can assure me in the comment section that it'll be fine. <laughs>